Hey guys, welcome back to another Frenemies video. I am sitting next to my fellow spandex-wearing friend, Brian Larson. And, um, where are we today, Brian? Yeah, we're in, uh, sunny Southern California in Carson, California. Just over the... just a block away from Compton. Beautiful Compton. Beautiful. And, um, this is the CBR crit. Is that what it's called? This is like a series of races, isn't it? Correct. Yeah, they run a series all spring long, and I think this was the finale. There might be one other race coming up here, but yeah, this was... this was the finale, and it's, uh always around the same courses the same general kind of industrial park crits a nice four corner windy crit we have those up here in norcal too but um i gotta say for for you listeners who um, aren't familiar with the california racing scene socal I, I gotta say they got us beaten crits i think they do they these races are so much faster than anything up here yeah so so the big major team in this race correct me if i'm wrong it's legion and they have justin williams well they have the williams brothers but yeah, they have CJ, Justin, and Corey. I don't know if you know that. There's three Williams brothers. They're all fast. <laughs> They're Just, all fast. <laughs> Justin is the national champion. You'll see him wearing the Stars and Stripes jersey. But, um, yeah, talk about your uh, your plan coming into this race. Yeah, so, Alex, this was after a, uh, a three-day weekend, and Alex and I, my teammate, uh, we were down there, and we were just kind of focused on training, and we weren't really sure where our sprint would line up. So, uh, you know, this was the last day. We had nothing left to hold back for, and so we were we were going all in on a, on a sprint finish with potentially – a late move flyer a long sprint but you you got into something early on that was kind of unexpected yeah alex and i both got into a move in the first i don't know it's about 20 minutes in people were starting to get tired and we rode up the road but you know legion wasn't in it and like you said they were the dominant force and so we had to uh we had to shut that down and i think justin himself was the one who brought it back when when both alex and i were up the road as well as tyler Locke and callum so good, good heavy headers there as well. Cool. Let's uh, let's fast forward a bit and uh, and we'll talk about how this race unfolds. All right. So we fast forwarded now. We are um, about 15 kilometers to go. And uh, and what's been going on? Yeah. So we've had about 70 minutes of really really hard fast racing and uh, no moves have actually stayed away up to this point. But there's been a couple valiant efforts. Legion in every almost every single move. Uh, up until this move here where Legion put, I think, two, three, maybe even four riders up the road, and all of a sudden it became dangerous. So so what's your guys' plan? So, so you have sprinters up the road, and you have the major team represented up the road. Are you worried this is going to stay away? Yeah, I am very worried. Um, I've seen this, and I've watched a lot of Justin Williams' videos and Corey Williams' videos and all these races, and 98% of the time it comes to a sprint. So it comes was, to a field sprint. It comes to a field so sprint. So you're thinking this is coming back? I am thinking that. I'm thinking, well, this is actually a good thing because we just sent the two strongest sprinters in the race up the road to do a threshold test for 20 minutes left in this race. And and look at the way you're riding on the back here. I mean, you're just tailgunning. You're saving a lot of energy. Tailgunning yeah. is like the most under underestimated <laughs> uh, overlooked skill. Yeah, so especially on like a windy course where there's a lot of acceleration and decelerations into the headwinds and tailwinds and crosswinds, I'm just surfing. Yeah, I, I'm just surfing, having my ties at the back. <laughs> and um, and uh, so so tail gunning. Um, I'm gonna try to explain it. You can correct me if I'm wrong here, um, because I feel like people have different interpretations of what this means. But um, what it means to me is you're not you're not concerning yourself with what's going on at the front of the race. You're sitting at at the back or very close to the back and you're letting gaps open up through the corners you're not touching your brakes at all you're carrying all your speed through the corners and you're like just basically doing this efficient type of riding where you're not overly concerned about gaps opening up in front of you that's the drawback yeah and actually very specifically is i let gaps open going into the corner so that i don't have to touch my brakes going through the corner yeah you're not keeping this tight like like three four inches between I'm, your front wheel and the guy in front of you's rear exactly. wheel exactly i'm i'm totally okay letting like a few bike links open up knowing that they're about to slow down and i basically want to make contact when they've already re-accelerated out of the corner perfect so you're saving energy here um you're gearing up for a sprint you're feeling that it's going to probably come back to a sprint based on how these guys race yeah very very sure it's going to come back or be very close and I just have to save all those bullets, knowing that even if it's not a sprint, I still have a, maybe a 2 or 3K effort left in me. And you have Alex and you have another teammate, too. And you're telling them what at this point? I'm telling them it's probably going to come down to a sprint. Um, but I actually do adjust with about 7 kilometers to go and talk to Alex and say, hey, like nobody's bringing this back. We have to take the action. And I tell him to go up, up the road. Okay, let's, uh, let's actually jam forward and uh, let's talk about that. 
All right, so here we are coming into four laps to go, and um, Brian spent the last uh, little bit here getting cozy at the back, saving energy, but um, but now I think maybe you're getting a little bit concerned that the brake's not coming back. What's going on? Yeah, we're trying to move up towards the pointy end of the race here, and I'm actually where you can see Alex's little shifter there. That's uh, We're getting a little close, and we're having a little conversation um, about how we think that we're going to have to go across to this. And I said, hey, I'll, I will let you know if we go. And actually, right around this moment, uh, you can't see my shadow, but I basically, like, I point forward saying, you have to go right now. And right as I say that, here goes Tyler Locke, one of the strongest riders in the race. Alex goes with him. And a whole bunch of groups here are kind of going across. Now, while it looks like this is still one unified group, everyone's about a bike length off of each other just scrambling we're going 35 everyone's getting a little desperate now 36 miles an hour 37, 37 <laughs> miles an hour like this is crazy these are those socal crits right 37 but we're, we're coasting here as a little bit of a tailwind and at this moment here coming into the what is a uphill headwind it doesn't look uphill but it is a little bit uphill here um this is where the scramble is happening. You see kind of guys are moving left and right. And this is where we're having to make the decision is, do you end up getting all the way across that? Or do you let somebody else take control of the race? And I'm looking over my shoulder here and seeing that there's no control team. Legion, who is normally responsible for these types of things, is nowhere to be seen because they're in the break. There's four, like four of them you set there's, up in the I break. I don't know. There's, they're multiplying yeah. up there. I don't know. They're, they were just <laughs> like the, probably 10 of them by the end of the race up the road. And so, and you could see there's a hand up there. Oh, they're calling for help. It's getting desperate here at the front. Yeah. And so there, he was calling for help. And actually his teammate is the guy on my wheel here. And so he's not able to pull through. Three again. laps to go, folks. And again, this is really. Oh, now it slows down. This is frustrating. It's really hard here. Yeah, you can't tell how hard it has been. And right there, you see through those wheels is Alex jumping. And so Alex did jump. And you can see the brake just going through the corner there. Alex has a little bit of separation. And what's interesting here is that Alex, while they're almost on his wheel, he just keeps going. And they all flick their elbows. And nobody can roll through here. See, we're all kind of scrambling. We're all scrambling. We were on his wheel through that corner, and he just blows him off of the wheel, and he actually gets almost across there. There, you can see him his white helmet, yeah. Yep, you can see that white pock helmet going through that corner, and he gets across right up there. And this is where there's people are looking over. You see how everyone's swinging out to the left, swinging Total out to the chaos. right? Total chaos. Nobody has control. And I actually really like these types of finishes because when there's no control... Uh, people tend to default to the conservative route. They hold back rather yeah. than going for it. And so this favors my finish right now. The brakes, you know, brakes tire coming back. But what ends up happening here, and this is actually the winning move is happening right at this moment, is two more Legion riders jumped out of that breakaway right when Alex got there. So a breakaway from the breakaway, and Alex just missed it. He got onto the back, two guys went off the front. Right, and that was my fault for not instructing Alex that he's going to have to run through that. And I don't know if you remember, we talked about that on one of our yeah. uh, Viso videos, right? So the stuff at El Viso applies in these 35 mile an hour Dude, crits. Too. That's why we, that's why we, we go out to El Viso. It's, it's like the best race practice, but he should have attacked right through that break. He would have been on, on two, uh, Legion, Legion guys wheels. Who knows what would have happened then? They might not have rode as hard as they did, but, yeah. um, but man, Whoa. that would have changed the dynamic of the race. That guy was going backwards. He was part of the breakaway for sure. Yeah. He was going backwards at about 10 miles. This an guy hour. on the front's yelling, looking back. It's total chaos. Now here's the national champ to your left. Yep. Yep. And that's Justin Williams. And I'm right back up on Alex's wheel. And if we have that audio on, I'm screaming at him that he's got to go. We're at two laps to go. And now that I like the chaos, but it's a little bit, it hasn't closed down. And right here, Justin Williams is coming up next to Dante, who's the guy with the white socks, white shoes, right at my uh, 10 o'clock here. And I'm on his hip, and he's telling Dante, you're sprinting. That tells me Justin is a little bit tired. Justin was up the road. He yeah. was doing threshold work. So he's telling his teammate, hey, it's you today. Exactly. He's so you're jumping on that wheel. That was and, that was smart. You're listening to their conversation. And that's what I'm doing here. And I get up, and that's CJ right there. So I'm surfing CJ's wheel, and CJ is going to go ahead and find Justin's wheel. So now we're coming into one and a half laps to go. This is the tailwind stretch. And I am a little bit far back. Um, but I'm you, not panicked, though. But you're in good company. I wouldn't be panicked either. If I see the, the national champ next to me, plus his lead out train for for best of the rest i wouldn't be panicked either this is actually a really good position even though true i you are a little bit further back than if you were going like full rogue 
But yeah. but man, you're you're basically treating yourself as one of the the team legion uh, lead out guys right now. Right, but I lose it here, so I do fall off the wheel, and then it moves hard right. I think coming up here, he Dante does a great job. He like he does not leave Justin's wheel. It doesn't matter if there's somebody next to him, in front of him, or in any case, he's going to stay on that wheel. And that's really important for any sprinter to understand that you need to stay on your lead out's wheel. It's not the lead out's responsibility. It's your responsibility as a sprinter. And the Williams brothers practice this stuff, too. They're so good at it. World yeah. class. Yeah. Yep. Check out their, their Instagram and, and everything. So there's a little bump in here. Okay. Yeah, a little close. This is what everyone thinks about when they think SoCal crits right here. Yeah. And the, the challenge for me is I really dislike these really wide uh, you know, boulevard type finishes and straights. Oh, yeah. Because see this where Alex gets swarmed there. Alex in front of me at the Cali kit. He gets um, one to you go. can get hit with both sides, right? Everyone can swarm you on either side, left or right. And I'm deciding, I had told Alex, you have to go, like hit it, everything. And previously in the race, and this is where I also failed to instruct with Alex, I told him I wanted him to hit it with two corners to go. So Alex has already used two, three bullets in the last three or four laps. And I think he had misunderstood me when I told him to hit it right now, that we were basically calling off his two corner to go attack. Instead, he conserved a little bit and ended up in a little bit uh, a little bit farther back than I had originally planned. Now, I am really far back here. You're, you're starting to lose the, the, the Williams Brothers wheels here. Right. With a half but a lap to go. We have a tail crosswind from the left here, and I actually don't even have to basically use a bullet. I think I even coasted Look at for this. a sec. Oh, it's so epic. <laughs> And then we're and then you know taking a look here we had Justin pulls over and yeah so we're gonna pause really quick here so this is a critical moment in this finish because I have to now decide which direction am I going here like in in this case uh, there's the left side of the road is gonna be moving forward and I have to decide if I'm gonna be capable of moving left or if I'm gonna have to go over the top on the right side of the road and or over the right side of these five riders. You in have front this of me. little gap right here too. This is what you're you're contemplating, right? Yes, it's, it looks a lot bigger on the camera than <laughs> it really was. And actually I have Dante, who is the sprinter today, is right on my hip. You can see his rear wheel in your in the rear cam. He is right on your hip. Yeah, like we're like together. We're we're we're, <laughs> we're one, one rider. rider right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And um actually then we can see that Justin actually moves hard left to get on this blue rider, and I cut at least like three feet left, and that caused a little bit of a flick. And then we see Alex actually there in the puck helmet gets hooked on the inside with one of the riders who is advancing and gets taken Boom. out of contention right there. Takes a nap with two corners to go. But I've managed to go ahead and get right on top of Justin Williams' wheel here, and now I'm actually in this sweet spot. <laughs> National champs wheel it doesn't get better than this. National champs wheel, who I know is going to sprint into the last corner. And this is exactly what he does. Does when he opens it up here, I actually gap Dante, and I'm stoked because this is about a 20 second sprint here. He flicks the elbow, and actually, um, again, we're going to stop for just a quick second here. He flicks the elbow, and, and before always, that, he looked under under the uh, saddle. If you guys want to rewind, he actually looks under the saddle, realizes, oh, that's not my teammate. And then he cuts left. I was the heavens opened up, and then the heavens and then they closed. Because he's he's no amateur. This isn't his, his first rodeo. He knows what's going on. He doesn't let you take the inside like that. Nope. And he knows that they have a double sprint in their legs, and I don't. I have that long sprint, and Whoa! I'm dodging. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, we got uh, photographers who come to races. Please watch out for <laughs> racers. All right, thanks for coming back, my fr my friend and me, Brian Larson. Thanks for coming back um, with another joint commentary, and uh, thanks for towing the line down in SoCal. Yeah, I got to represent down with those Crip boys in L.A. Keep your eyes peeled for uh, more content. I uh, hope to have you back. Yeah, thanks.